we've already started this chat and it was amazing what we've started so far. <laughs> so now we are officially starting. Um, do you like to be called Cindy or Cynthia? What's your preference? Uh, uh, Cindy's great. Cindy, okay. Because I saw in your um, Zoom profile, it says Cindy, but I only know you in my head as Cynthia. From yeah, Facebook. they're both, they both are there. They both work, yeah. So um, Cindy and I are here together to talk about what she loves and what she loves is art and nature mm -hmm. and sharing that passion with other people. Um, when, when did you start creating art? Well, I think, like I said, ever since I was very young, I was always creating something. Mm -hmm. um, we used to write plays and perform them because I had lots of brothers and sisters. So I had a, a ready-made um, cast of thousands right there. Mm. And then, <laughs> and then um, you know, and writing stories and poems as kids and doing art and all of that. And then, and nature, I, I spent all of my time outside and, and in Kansas, there's like the the wheat fields that blow in the wind like like waves mm -hmm. and the sunsets are huge and red it was just a very uh, I was always moved by that and at night you go out and lay under the stars and watch clouds and the bats came out I mean it's just everything about um living on earth was just uh, you know it, it went into me very deeply and it's and it still does and so that's what I love I love um our mother you, so you've never felt like you didn't belong here oh i always felt like i didn't belong here <laughs> okay <laughs> nature i consider different than the world yeah yeah okay <laughs> nature is one thing people are another mm -hmm. culture society all of that is a very different situation because that is very uh, that's where you run into trouble right things get very dangerous and you get kind of pulled here and there and you and you're uh, we're always taught, I mean, we're, we're disconnected from all of that stuff. I mean, it took me years to discover, go back and find out who I really was and mm. work my source and all of that. I mean, just to let go of everything I'd ever been taught uh, and learned. And in fact, that, that was one of the best things that ever happened to me after a life of following other paths and other people and other teachings, all of a sudden to say, you know what, I'm going to not, I'm going to let go of all of that. And I'm mm. not going to, I'm going to let go of everything I believe and everything I think and all of my concepts to the extent that I can do that and and just say it it all has to come from inside of me it has to be from inside my source myself otherwise it's I can't trust it you know it comes from somewhere else so once I got to that place then um it's kind of that place is interesting because it, it uh, it's you're on your own in a way you're kind of out there you know that you're not um it, it's different a different place to be it's it's mm -hmm. kind of um without ground under you in a way but yet you're you're feeling like you're going more and more towards what's real and what's true at least for me yeah i'm curious if you have art from that you still have from before you did that process and what it feels um, like to look at it now yeah, it. Um, yeah, that's interesting because I did. I, I actually didn't start painting until a few years ago. I did a lot of other things, you know, mm -hmm. reading and um, you know, glass and that. But but the painting, I, I for some reason I didn't let myself start that, even though I really wanted to do it. And mm -hmm. as soon as I started it, it was like, oh, I love this. Is like this is it. <laughs> and yeah. so I did um, start and. And I don't know what I'm doing, so I just started doing it. And then when we started traveling in our trailer, because we, about a year ago, I, I switched over to digital art because you can you can't really have a lot of big canvases and right. oil paint. You can't make your your uh, RV into a studio if you want to live with your uh, your spouse. <laughs> so, and so that actually was really cool because I could take photographs that I take and put them in, and then manipulate mm -hmm. them and change them. And so, it, and it feels like you're painting with that digital. Um, with the programs and so it was actually a, a really kind of fun and transformative so i think i just keep going deeper with it but i don't have like i really like paintings from that time like you were talking about yeah probably, you know in that way it's funny to see the the poems that i've started writing in the beginning and how you can really see my consciousness change over 
the years that I've now, I mean, right now I've been writing right. poetry for three years. So. Yeah. And I, Lots and I love, in fact, there was one poem that you had in the book that you recently, um, I'm just looking for it here that you recently wrote, which, which was matched exactly the painting that I put of the high priestess. Ooh. It, and so I was going to show that picture and read that poem at the same time. Oh, if you, amazing. If, if, what do you think? I would love to. Yes. Okay. Because I loved that picture on, on Facebook. Uh, no, thank you. I mean, I, I started working with uh, Row. I did the fool and that, and the high priestess mm. and the string. And, and so I'm trying to do a, a series of those, but that takes a long time, as you know. Yep. <laughs> so you have to get through it. There it is. Uh, oh, so I can't share my screen, but. Oh, let's see if I can figure out how to I do I can that. text it to you if you want to do that. Um, there's got to be a way I can give you permission. Yeah, I'm sure there is. Let's see. They've thought of everything. Multiple participants. Now try. Okay. Okay, now I just have to pop over to it. Photos, here we go. And now let me open that one. Ooh. <gasps> Isn't that? So that's the one uh, which I recently did, which I really enjoy because the high priestess is, there, is, is there's so much about her that is, um, you know, it's all about the depth and going beyond yourself and all of that, everything that we've been talking about. And, and you wrote, your poem was <clears throat> the priestess within mm. in the space of nothingness and everythingness she dwells, inviting us to plant within her fertility something beautiful. She is the water of the subconscious and like fish in the lake of God, our fears, thoughts, beliefs swim madly. She's also the moon silently keeping watch, patiently redirecting us towards wholeness. As we contemplate her on a starry night, we can see in her both dark and light mm. and know the truth of our being. We can follow her into everything and through her, through her we go beyond the veil into the birth of love. And, and I, when I read, and I was reading that, and, I, and then I thought of this painting. I thought, "Wow, that's really cool." Yes, <laughs> the, <laughs> things go together. I mean, the same feelings, you know, of it. It's gorgeous. I love, I love her. the The water coming off both sides of her. It, it feels like I could touch yeah. it. It's incredible. Yeah. I mean, and the. the um, in the art in the in the uh, Arthur not the the weight the, the the standard tarot anyway they do have water coming off and it goes mm -hmm. of the subconscious so yeah it feels like you have to have water and the the nautilus shell in the center yeah right oh <laughs> that, that and that has special meaning to me because um uh, earlier in my lifetime I you know I was an atheist and I um and I went to a math class and the math class was studying the Fibonacci sequence, which is part of that Fibonacci, that shell and so on. Mm -hmm. And when I walked out of that class, all of a sudden it was like a big veil was removed and everywhere I looked, I saw this pattern and this, and, mm -hmm. the, and, and everything was, it was like nature just lifted a veil and revealed to me all of this order and beauty and thing. And I said, Oh, wait a minute, this is all different than what I thought. So that, that has a special meaning to me as well. Wow. And how do you, what program do you use for this? This is Procreate. And what, wow. it, it, what it does is it, um, it's great. It's like a very um, affordable program you can put on your um, iPad or even on your iPhone if you want to. And mm -hmm. it's like 10 bucks or something. And, but it has all these brushes and all these different things you can do. And you can put, I take my photographs and put them in there or my paintings or whatever. And then you mm -hmm. can manipulate them or you can use other things. And so it's a lot of fun. Mm. And, and it just... And you, it's the, you, you get this, it's like I'm worried about digital art, whether you the same, actually painting on canvas. And for me, it, is, it does have that same feeling of, you know, you can spend hours changing things and manipulating and all of that. So, yeah. Right. It's, a lot of, it's pretty fun. Oh, my goodness. Uh oh. <laughs> You're still here. Uh oh. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. And I'm looking at her cloak. She I'll, has. I'll just, she has um, two feathers in her hands. Is that what I see? A feather yeah, the, in each the hand. white and the black. Feather. Yeah. Yes. Mm. And um, like a snowy owl fe feather and a raven feather. 
And mm -hmm. in the original tarot card, she sits between a black and a white um, pillars. Right. Some, somehow seem too um, like stable or something like that. This is something that, that floats in the air. And feathers are also like sometimes they say that if you find a feather in your house, or they, it's a message from the from the angels or a message from yeah. from beyond. And so I was just like, this is a me she brings messages from beyond as part of it, and in the light and dark, of course. And I yeah, love how oh, she's not, you know, Caucasian. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. And that was one thing, because I taught Tarot for a long time and there were people sitting in the class and um, people of color would come and I always think, now how would you experience this? All of these cards, everybody's white, yeah. you know, it would, except for the devil, he's brown, but yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I thought there, we have to do something different here. So yeah. Wow, how beautiful. Well, thank you. I love that one. And she has on her, um, the, her legs is, is that just a pattern in her cloak? Yes, it is. It mm. is. Yeah. It's kind of, yeah. Gorgeous. Mm. Can I see another tarot card one? Yes, you can. <laughs> yeah. Let me go get this. Let me go back to this. We'll go to this one. This is a fool, the fool, which, um, <gasps> it, you know, which is different than stepping off a cliff, but oh, being yeah. born is kind of like stepping off a cliff. Yep. And, yeah, and we're we're born, we still have that that light within us, it's sparkling mm -hmm. all around us, but we're connected always to that to the womb of um, of uh, our source. So anyway, that was just a, a meditation that I had about that. And the the wreath around the the crown yeah. is so beautiful too. Yeah. It's, it's wow, so I love that. Yeah, that's another. Yeah, I like that one too. And, mm -hmm. and, then, um, and then one more I'll show you, which is. Um, which is, this one was kind of strength. strength. <laughs> that was the one I kind of gasped at when you were like, <gasps> That was oh. fun. It was like, uh, you know, taming all what seems crazy and demonic and everything, but it isn't. Right. Life, right. It's all just part of all of life. Oh, that is gorgeous. But do you well, put I, these up on the internet someplace? Well, you know what? I have. Um, they have called the tarot and, and these paintings, I put them up there mm. as part of discussion. I started doing that. So they, they, and sometimes I post them on you know, Facebook, but yeah, I haven't expanded out of that yet. What I'd like to is to, is to do more with them, um, with that. As, yeah. as, but I was kind of waiting till more developed and then having a, a blog about that or a web right. page, but it's still in process. Yeah. So yeah. I would love to have a print of this. Oh, that's a great idea. You could make an Etsy page with prints. Um, that's a great idea. I mean, strength, the strength card is my birth card. So of course I'm like, oh. <laughs> I love this. I love how she looks like oh, she's well, holding a staff really or something. Yeah, of light, yes. Oh, it's incredible. Yes. You, now this is from a photo that you took? No, you know what this started out as is um, if you've seen the pictures of Jupiter, right? Yep. The, the, uh, yeah. And so this was a picture of Jupiter and I put that, I took that photograph as the background and that's mm. kind of, and then, and then the things emerged out of it is kind of how it happened. So, wow. yeah. How long does it take you to work on a piece like this? Well, that's a great question because it actually keeps track of how long it takes, but I know it took a long, you know, quite a, quite a few hours, I mean, quite yeah. a long time uh, to do it because you keep, I keep, I always go back and keep messing with it for a while, but, but right. yeah, that's, that's actually a good question. I should look it up and find out <laughs> how, how long it took because they do tell you that. But anyway, I'm not sure. It's just like painting. They could ask you how long does it take to write a poem? It depends, right? <laughs> It usually takes me less than 10 minutes. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. It's pretty but, fast. But everything that leads up to it, though, is. is oh, is right. Different. Totally. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how to count that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know how to count the uh, the moments of meditating and. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's all her. part of it. Right. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Oh, I, I love it. And it almost has um, like the dragony thing at the bottom if that's yeah. what it is it, it's exactly. like kind of asian feeling a little bit but the yeah. top part looks i mean she looks like a shepherdess she does and, and she is in a way yeah she is, she is. Mm. 
I love it. I could stare at this painting for a long time. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Wouldn't be a very interesting conversation, but <laughs> for anyone else, I just see my face like, huh. <laughs> well, I'll stop sharing here, but that, that's just a couple of uh, things. And thank you for letting me share those. Oh, my pleasure. Um, hmm. So when you have a creative process like that, you know, for me, when I have a poem that wants to be written, it's kind of an urgent, sudden thing, typically. Mm -hmm. um, occasionally, I have a question where I'm like, I wonder, I don't understand this thing. Let me try to start to write a poem and see if the answer emerges. But usually it's an answer has been created and it wants to be shared in a poem form. How, how does it work for you with your um, painting? Are you sitting with well, a question? That's a great question. Or? Well, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I uh, just get the canvas and I just start putting things on, you know, just messing with it and see what merges. Sometimes it tells me what it wants to do. And mm -hmm. other times I do have an idea and I come in, I say, okay, I want to um, do the, I want to make something with the high priestess. And so I'll start working with it. And, and, and but it, usually I don't have a really clear idea in my mind. I might have an idea of what I want to do, like high priestess or strength, but I don't. Um, know what it's going to look like right. right away you know it takes a while to emerge so that's part of it yeah it's 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 a really interesting process and yeah mm -hmm. and some things don't work and some do so that's always there's always that but what do you do with the stuff that doesn't work <laughs> it, well I still have it uh, sitting on my computer you know what I mean because it's good to, as a it, it's really a good I always learn something from whatever it is I learn something about technique or something about colors or something so it's not a wasted effort right you know and, and i had to give up that idea that everything you produce has to be good because it isn't <laughs> it, it, it's right <laughs> it's like yeah. life it's like life itself is you know it, we learn as we go <laughs> yeah but i know for me a lot of times when i look back over poems or i'm like this, yeah. this poem was just for me and i go back yeah. over it and i'm like wow like take might take me months to understand what i was trying to say Oh, wow. That's really interesting. So I wonder if, if you looked back at the poem or at the painting, there would be something secret that would emerge. And there might be. And, and that's why I keep them too. I don't, I, you know, I don't because they, they, there's something in them. You're right. There's some kind of message that needs to be understood for, even if it's just for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually really good. Do you have any, um, have you ever made a self portrait? <laughs> I did, but I don't, let me see if I have it here. I don't know. I have it in here somewhere. It might take me a while to find it, but yeah. <laughs> you have done that. How did it feel to do that? Oh, it was fun, but it wasn't really a picture like right. you would think. It was something different. <laughs> yep. What so emerged I was... I painted a picture of, of really behind it, not really my body. So it was different. Mm -hmm. How many of yeah. the tarot cards do you have so far? Well, it's just really three. Three. And, and right now three we're just starting on the other so yeah because i just started that a, a few months ago so working through those i was trying to write um poems to match every tarot card and i yeah. think i got maybe half <laughs> well, i know and actually i read some of those which i really liked a lot yeah like, Thank well you. that might be fun to do a, a a creative thing together where we, we have could. pictures and a poem that goes with it you know what i mean you know exactly. that, that would be actually a lot of fun it would be fun we can make a coffee table book yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> now that i know how to self-publish it's not hard no i know it's actually and the part is as selling <laughs> yeah marketing or whatever yeah well yeah it's funny um i was surprised I don't think I was all that surprised, but I was somewhat surprised to find out that after you put your book up on um, Amazon, like pricing it at whatever you think you can, I, I think I make $3 a book or something like that. <laughs> oh yeah, they take their share, I'm sure. You don't you don't make a lot of money, but that's no. okay. I, I have a, I actually I, I like to write too. And so I, I wrote, a, it's kind of a science fiction fantasy book. It's actually coming out next in a couple months which will Ooh. be fun are you going to put it up on uh, amazon i will I'll put, it, I'll put it up on, on facebook it's um it's it's part of a labyrinth of souls it's a series of novels not i'm writing one but other people have written other ones so yeah that, that'll be fun too cool like fanfic like fan fiction 
it, it's a little bit like that. Um, a guy named Matt Lowe's, he actually mm-hmm. has written them. He wrote a tarot game called Labyrinth of Souls. Yeah. And, um, and so it's based on the tarot game. You know, he, he the game that he wrote is a like a Dungeon and Dragons type of game. It's, it's a lot of fun. But anyway, oh, yeah. it's based on tarot cards that were created by this artist that he um, partnered with, who's a German artist. And um, his name is Joseph Vandell, I think. And he, mm-hmm. anyway, they, they created this game. And then we were playing the game one time and, and uh, one of the other authors said, well, you know what, we could write a story about this. And then, so she wrote the first one and then they, they just started publishing the um, Shadow Spinners Press. Oh, cool. Publishes and is going to be publishing it. Yeah. So anyway, that will, that's another arm of creativity and writing. And mm. so I, I like to write and it, that's the other part of it. So I see how do things all fit together? Yeah. And I think that's why I started to get to know you is because I saw some of the things that you were writing on Facebook and oh. appreciated what you were writing and thought it was, you were, had beautiful, you had beautiful sight. Well, thank you. Yeah. I feel, I feel the same about you. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, that's one thing I do love. I, I wanted to say this is, is that I love seeing all um, younger women just coming up with these incredible visions and voices and action and just are, are leading the way out there. And mm. I consider you one of them and, and, and there's thank many. You. Out there. So it, it's, uh, it's wonderful. I feel good about that. It seems every generation of us gets more uh, outspoken, <laughs> courageous. Exactly. And, and, and getting to a place sooner, mm-hmm. getting to the place sooner where you can do that, then it, that, like, it, it took me a long time to get there. I mean, I'm 71, right? So it mm-hmm. took me a long time to get to the place, but I see people coming up and, and doing it. And it doesn't take them that long to get there. And right. that is good. I mean, it, it just seems like things happen faster now for people. Yeah. You know, do you think? I would agree. You know, when I, when I'm working, I'm working with teenage girls who, uh, they really just can articulate themselves really well. And they, and, and, and are on spiritual paths of their own and are curious about things that I didn't have space for yet until I was in my uh, late thirties, early forties. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I'm amazed. Yeah, I agree. And, And, and also just the whole lexicon and what people know about is totally like like 40 years ago or whatever or 50 years ago is like talking about the light or mystic types of things was kind of out there and now it's just like everybody anybody knows even the guy on the street right who, who's yeah. fishing at the bridge knows about it everybody can talk about it and even their understandings may vary but it's common uh, it's a common consciousness which is different right so our consciousness continues to expand i think as human beings and um Hopefully it can solve some of our problems that we have on the right. planet. <laughs> yeah. Now with social media and the internet, I mean, you're, you can be exposed to a lot of ideas that you wouldn't, you couldn't have, you know, even when I was young, we didn't have the internet and there was the, you know, the world book encyclopedia. <laughs> right. That's <laughs> <a> right. Research. <laughs> I remember that. That's funny. But, but the ideas are still like seeds because they're so shallow unless you really dive into them. I mean, right. you're supposed to a lot of seed ideas, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, my daughter has, she's 13 and she's on, um, do you know the app called TikTok? Have you ever heard of yeah. that? Yeah. You can, there's a lot of stuff on there and, and some yeah. of it's stupid, yeah. of course, yeah. <laughs> like, of course. like everywhere. <laughs> Um, but a lot of it's really incredible. There are, are different teachers on there. Um, there's a lot of poetry. There's a lot of beautiful artists I mean, sharing their art. Um, it's a really great way to market yourself. If you're not, you know, like Facebook, you're, you're kind of limited by uh, who you are friends with and who's the algorithm, to share, right? you know, what you have. Yeah, you're somewhat limited. And if you don't, you can only have 5,000 people that's, you know, max. Yeah. But TikTok will just show your video to everyone in, in the population. It has yeah. a different way of working. Yeah, I know. It's really interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you were first painting, what kinds of things were you painting? Oh, I'll here, I'll show you one if you want. Sure. I have a, an older one here. Let me, I just have to find it. 
just a second here, go back to it. Here it is. Like here's one of the first things I painted was, it was a pine cone, right? Oh, beautiful. <laughs> it's kind of cute. Yeah, I mean, but it was just, but you know, it's 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 a little bit clumsy, but it but it but it but it, it, it to me it was like, wow, this really looks like a pine cone. I was amazed. Yeah. It feels <laughs> alive too. Yeah, and so it was like, wow, this is really fun. And so I had this sitting on my my cabinet next to her, real, the pine cone that modeled for it, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And then and then um you know, like the like this kind of thing. It's it's just kind of like trying to get figure out how to do motion and moon and yeah. waves and you know it's it's just kind of um, that that's the kind of thing I started doing. I started out with kind of natural mm -hmm. things because that makes sense to me, and then move into more abstract stuff. So yeah. Anyway, that, I, that kind of was an idea. I, I started painting a little last year. Um, a friend of mine offered to teach Noah and I how to find our inner angel. Perfect. <laughs> And it was fun. We, she just had us kind of smear paint on the canvas and we would look for shapes that kind of emerged. And from that, there was a whole, like she helped me find a face and find the body of the angel oh, and, cool. and even the wings. And it was really cool. Yeah, it is. I mean, that's the thing about it as art. And that's one thing I really want to do when I, when I get where I'm going is, is to invite people into the experience of it. You know mm. what I mean? I have because um, I also do the you know the sound bowls, the sound baths, and things mm. like that, and which I love to do. And so I was thinking combining that with having people create while those are playing is either to write or paint or things like that, and see if that enhances their experience or um, yeah, you know, just different things like that. Because a lot of people don't think they can do something, but really, well, like you said with the angel thing, it's really not that hard. I mean, no. you can it's all about just messing with the color and opening up and allowing something to move through. Right. Right. And not having an expectation that you're going to paint, exactly. you know, a French, you know, 18th right. century painter. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you're That's not it. going to do that. It's not going I know. to I mean, You wouldn't that. expect to sit down at the piano and play, you know, Beethoven that I mean, right. you don't even know how to read them anyway, but we do have these weird expectations. Right. <laughs> For sure. Um, I think, you know, with the, with the practice that I had writing poetry and just kind of letting it come out, even if it didn't sound like a poem, um, that helped me to just make, like, just have fun smearing the paint around and being fine with it. Yeah. And who cares what it looked like? And, and it ended up really cute. I love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What did you do for work? Okay. Let's see. What did I do? I've worked mostly in, in healthcare most of my life. I'm doing um, like process improvement which is kind of a creative thing because you get people together and you get them to figure out how to solve a problem, you know, using, anyway, it's, it's a different process. So that was a lot of, actually a lot of fun. And also did a lot of, you know, teaching, you know, coaching people, teaching things like, um, you know, relationship skills and oh, leadership right. skills and things like that. Within, yeah. within a hospital or? Yeah, it was, yeah. it was, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, because yeah, a lot of times, as you know, people get promoted, but they have no idea how to manage people. And that's not an easy thing to do. It's a whole, you could spend years studying that alone. So it was kind of to help people figure that out. Yep. Were you, were you creating art all along like, while you were? Um, no, I actually was doing, I, I did, like I said, I, I, I did weaving for a few years, which mm -hmm. was, which was nice. And then I got into uh, glass fusing, which was also another thing. So I was always doing something. You know, and I tried pottery. I mean, I was always trying different things until you find the thing that you really, really like, mm -hmm. that, you know, which is coming. It takes a time, right? An artist looking for a medium. <laughs> right. What is the difference between glass fusing and glass blowing? Is there a difference? Well, there is a difference. Yeah. The, the blowing part is, um, that's actually pretty, a, a really physical thing. I, mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, they take the glass, they melt it, and then they put tubes in and they blow it while it's in the flame whereas the fusing is you you cut glass mm -hmm. and you put it in patterns and, and molds and mm -hmm. things and you put it in a kiln and you and you um and, you, and then you fuse it together so it's it's different design techniques but sometimes they take fused glass and then and create a, a glass thing and then change that blow that into a vase or something like mm. that i'm yeah. picturing like one like a tiffany style lamp like that yeah. kind of um like stained glass look it could be that kind of look although th there's um 
the artistry in the glass is really quite amazing because people create all different new techniques and new looks and it, mm. it's, it's kind of amazing what, what people can do with that yeah i had a little kiln and everything it was amazing <laughs> yeah there's not a lot of art, art artistic things that i've actually tried oh not yeah. so much well, but then i but then i always think, I think life it's like how can you create life whatever it is you want to create and so that in itself it's the same process because you you have to go within you have to know what you want you have to to um to look around and say wow this is really beautiful and harmonious i'm you know i like this or um you know whatever it is you're doing whether it's your house how you set it up or uh how you are in your relationship which i see you guys doing a very artistic uh thing with that right and very creative what you're doing together and, and creating all of these and sharing that information so i don't know i think every creativity is so much bigger than just art i mean um, an, an actual painting or writing or anything like that it's yeah. it's it's how do you solve problems how do you um how do you find new ways to be in relationship how do you do, figure out how to live the life you really want given the resources you have I mean, there's many ways to be creative right yeah you're right yep innovative you. <laughs> for my <Innovative>. name <laughs> no it's true though I, mean, I think for so long in my life i was uh you know like most of my creativity was raising children and I, what kind of thing can we play with now right <laughs> and also um like other ways of being creative i wanted a recipe for it right exactly or someone to help me like I've never been so much on the interior design thing. And like, can someone just come in and make this look pretty for me? <laughs> it just seems overwhelming. Like what colors do you choose? But right. yeah, but as my um, openness to being creative blossomed, then I was able to kind of, well, whatever, like, let's see how these pillows work in the room. And if they don't work, that's fine. We can return them and, you know. Oh. So what do you think, and I've thought about this before, what do you think is gets in the way of people being creative or thinking they're creative or blocking their own creativity or, or just seeing it in a way that, in a very narrow way, maybe? Um, I think it's, for me, it was too much mental chatter. Yeah. I, I wasn't still enough inside yet mm -hmm. to be able to feel the beauty in different things or be able to perceive the the right the rightness of something something just feels right or looks right to you um, because I had a lot of noise in my head about um, well if you write a poem it should be in this particular form or if you decorate you know, I am a house, right? <laughs> yeah yeah I don't even know what any of that is to, but as an example um, you know yeah what do you, what have you decided or what have you perceived as blocks well mostly it's, it, i think it's just ideas and concepts we have and maybe that happened when we were little somebody didn't like the coloring that you did or so who knows right or oh, people true. have concepts about themselves and always judging themselves as not being good enough or perfect enough or you know creative enough or whatever everyone has that ability i think to do. I mean, some people might naturally be gifted as something or other, but everyone is is a gift. Everyone can do it. I think it's just a matter of figuring out what it is you like to do, what gives you joy, um, mm -hmm. and, and giving yourself permission to make mistakes and, and to produce something really ugly. <laughs> <laughs> For the heck of it, because it's fun, right? Because it's fun, like just to, like like finger painting, right? It's just fun that you don't keep and keep that thing. It's, like kids just, they just mess with it and it's fun. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's like what, what, where do we stop allowing ourselves to just make a mess? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And there, yeah, that I agree. There's this huge fear of failure, a fear of making mistake or, or um, perceived mistakes. It, it, and really that's the only way we learn anything is by making a bunch of mistakes. If we even look at them as mistakes, that's the right. thing is, are they even mistakes? No, because usually we, whatever we do, we do the, what it, with every, all the resources and ideas and things we had at the time, we do what we do, right? Right. It might be better choices could be made later, but you wouldn't know that at the time. That's true. So really, is it, is it, is it just learning? And is it just, that's what life is. It's just a series of um, 
experiences and 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 how can we ex, um, be fully in the experience without like you said all the mental chatter and the doubt and the fear and the judgments our self judgments and self whatever yeah so that that was the, yeah it's just being uh, permission to to try new things make mistakes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and no, nobody can give you the permission except yourself right 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 you know some people grew up in family systems where th that was really encouraged yeah and, and maybe they have i don't know if you want to call it an advantage but maybe they just have more practice being being affirmed from the outside so that they can affirm themselves from the inside. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, a lot of people either grow up with um, parents who are self-conscious about their own creativity or just not very affirming. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 Or just very success oriented or perfection oriented or something. Right. Yeah. And it's really hard. I mean, it's really hard for parents to actually be able to give every kid what they need all the time. I and mean, that's impossible. I yeah, think there's no such thing as that. And so you, everybody's going to, yeah, you, yeah, that could happen. Yep. Well, what is, what's your current project? Well, it's um, like we talked about, I think it's going to be continuing to work on some of the tarot cards and, um, trying to manifest a wonderful new house in my mm -hmm. <laughs> in my life that's a project and i think um one of the, the things i really care about and concerned about is, is just what can we do to um ensure that the planet is still has everything that we need going for for our kids and our grandkids and everybody mm -hmm that on the planet have what they need and how can we do that and how can we care about each other and how can art even assist with that is that because that's what i think of sometimes like i'm concerned about those things and i'm creating the over here doing these things and is there a connection and is mm -hmm. am i just um should, shouldn't i be out there doing something but but i think they can be um they they are important because art conveys concepts and ideas and it can uh, carry much more and so i think it for that so anyway that's my project to try to um, mm. figure out how to incorporate action to, for the for the the good of the planet and for the people on it in, in addition to to what into art and 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 beauty and how can i combine those things in mm. my life so it take more than one lifetime to do that. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> what a beautiful question. I love that question. <clears throat> and I, I've thought about that too. How can, well, of course I think about it and then I, and I come back to the message that I always get, which is do the, the next thing in the moment, like do the next right wow. thing and the next right wow. thing. And then <laughs> Exactly. Every day, on and on and on, you'll be led into whatever you know it is that you're hoping for. Exactly. But I'd that's, love to see that, that's a really good point because a lot of times we we meditate or we ask a question, we think we're gonna get the big answer, and really what we get is just the next piece, right? Yeah. You just yep. oh, do this. It's a small thing, but it but it, all the small things build to the bigger thing. So yeah, that, that's really something true. went wrong. Uh oh, that's my uh, my other phone going off. <laughs> Nothing went wrong. Nothing went wrong. <laughs> That's a funny message. Something went wrong. Siri, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that is a false belief. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'll be thinking about that for the next little while. <laughs> well, thank you so much for chatting today. It was lovely. Well, thank you for doing these chats yeah. and for, um, for, um, for everything you're doing, really. Thank you. In connection Likewise. and helping people to think and work on healing and moving forward, I, all of that. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. I would love to, um, with your permission, share 
that painting, the strength painting. Sure, I'll, I'll um, send it to you. Okay. I like to, um, you know, to beat the Facebook algorithm. <laughs> if you yeah. if you share links that point people off Facebook, they they don't um, uh, they kind of put that lower on the priority of what what people see. So if I have a photo that I can share yeah. and then put our interview in the comments, um, people more people will see it. Yeah, that's oh, that's one, a great one, idea. One little trick that I have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Jamie. And uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll see you on in the Facebook world. <laughs> okay, bye. Have a good day. Happy Thanksgiving. You too.